Kayvon Thibodeau is mad that the Giants didn't pay running back Saquon Barkley. But should he be, given the numbers and the sequence of events? I'll clarify all that for you. Plus, we'll look at the dangerous game the Giants are potentially planning to play with Saquon Barkley and his contract negotiation. That's coming your way next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. And use the promo code LOCKEDONNFL, written in all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Train. I'm P. Train, credentialed member of the New York Giants media for Locked On, as well as GiantsCountry.com, part of the Fan Nation Network. And I want to send a shout out. And a word of appreciation, of course, to my Blue Crew community members, my everydayers, my newcomers, and everybody in between. You all know who you are. You are loved and appreciated. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. And on today's Locked on Giants podcast, I realize I'm a little late to the party on this, but I want to talk about this whole story with Kayvon Thibodeau appearing on Carmelo Anthony's um, podcast and saying how he was mad that Saquon Barkley didn't get a pay, you know, didn't get his payday. Um, I want to kind of go into that a little bit. I want to give you some of the background, some financial numbers and stuff, kind of what the Giants were thinking about. And then I'm, a little later on in the program, I'm going to talk about a big gamble that I think the Giants are taking with this whole Saquon Barkley negotiation that's coming up. So that is today's agenda. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's get into it. Now, Kayvon Thibodeau, as we all know, if you follow him on social media, he aspires to get into media one day. He even talked about potentially setting up his own podcast. That's his right, okay? I know some people have problems with that. Some people are like, oh, worry about you know your football game and helping the team win and be better. But look, if Kayvon Thibodeau or any player wants to set up a podcast, that is their right to do so. It is also his right to have an opinion about things. Now, you know, some people will say, well, he could have an opinion, but he shouldn't mention it, you know, especially if it's inflammatory towards the team. Nah, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm not sure what he said was is going to make Joe Shane or Brian Dable, you know, come down hard on him with the hammer and a fine or anything like that. But here's the whole thing that I have with uh with Kayvon expressing that particular opinion. Um, if you kind of go and dig a little deeper and do some homework and look at the financials and just how things kind of fell into place, maybe, you know, the decision doesn't look as, you know, frustrating, if you will. So, you know, let's, let's go here. Um, and I want to give you some background on the Saquon Barkley thing, you know, versus Daniel Jones. And it really shouldn't come down to a Barkley versus Jones thing, but, you know, the whole reason why Saquon Barkley did not sign a deal with the Giants last year was the guaranteed money was not what it needed to be. Now, I wrote about this. I've also spoken about this in the past. In order to get a deal done, the Giants would have had to give Saquon Barkley the equivalent guaranteed money equal to the sum of the 2023 franchise tag and the 2024 franchise tag. They did not do that, all right? You go back and you look at some of the other contracts that they signed, guys to Daniel Jones, Dexter Lawrence, Andrew Thomas. They did that. They signed those guys and they included guaranteed money that more than covered the franchise tag amounts for those particular position groups. They didn't do that for whatever reason with Saquon Barkley. All right, so that's why, you know, when people say, oh, you know, the Giants had a chance to sign Saquon Barkley and he turned down offers. That is why I believe he turned down the offers. The guaranteed money wasn't there. This whole notion of Daniel Jones being favored over Saquon Barkley 
is also bogus. And I take you back to the 2023 bye week when it came out that the Giants attempted to re-sign Barkley to extend him during the bye week and how Daniel Jones the following week when everybody got back was asked point blank, did the Giants contact your representatives about a contract extension and how Daniel said, no, they did not. All right. So that right there should have told you that, yeah, the Giants were interested in re-signing Barkley and Jones, they were willing to wait on before doing anything. So any talk of this favoritism, you know, that incident right there, that sequence of events, in my opinion, says otherwise. All right. Now, here's the problem. Why the Giants are probably being um, frugal with Saquon Barkley. You cannot build around a running back. And that is a mistake that I think in retrospect, Dave Gettleman, when he drafted Saquon number two in 2018, I think he made that mistake. You know, running back, you know, in today's game, we all know that today's game is, is all about a passing league. It's the emphasis on receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks. Running backs, unfortunately, are an afterthought. It's just how it goes. So you don't draft a running back high unless you're finishing off a, a roster that is pretty much solidified. And at the time, remember, Eli Manning was at the end of his, you know, approaching the end of his career. The offensive line wasn't very good. You know, they, I think they had Odell Beckham Jr., I think, for one that one last season before they traded him away. And you're drafting Saquon Barkley, you know, and it's not Barkley's fault. Barkley had no say over where he got drafted, so I'm not blaming him. But you're, you're drafting a running back at number two overall, and I understand why they did it. I don't agree with it, but I understand why they did it. You're drafting a running back two overall when you could have traded down and solidified your offensive line for your aging quarterback. So instead, your thought process is, okay, look, we get a running game in here, you know, a guy who could take some of the onus off of Eli Manning, who had just come off of two straight seasons of throwing for 600 plus attempts. You know, maybe that makes it easier on him and extends his shelf life. Nope. Wrong approach. Just, you know, not the right approach there. That's though is why I believe they they went in the direction they went. So what happens the following year, that, that 2018 season, Eli Manning absorbs, I think it was 47 sacks, which was a career high for him. All that because the offensive line got ignored. So, you know, that's why, you know, the decision to draft Saquon number two overall, which by the way, everybody knew as far back in February of that year was the direction the Giants were going to go. I mean, it was one of the worst kept secrets in the whole draft process. It just, it didn't make sense. So that being said, when it comes to paying Barkley now, you know, Joe Shane had to make some decisions. And again, keeping in mind that you can't, build around or it's not smart to build around a running back is it smarter to build around a quarterback mm -hmm. is it smarter to build around a left tackle mm -hmm. is it smarter to build around an interior defensive lineman who is uh, who, who continues to rise mm -hmm. so that's the approach Shane took now you guys are going to probably sit there and say but Daniel Jones you know is no good they can't build around him Okay, look at the contract, though, they gave Daniel Jones. Yes, it was a four-year, $160 million deal. But in reality, it's a two-year deal. They have an escape hatch. If they were that sure that Daniel Jones is their guy for the long-term future, don't you think they would have structured that deal a lot differently than they did? I mean, they would have, guys. You know, So that right there, the way that deal was structured, should tell you everything you need to know about how the Giants really feel about Daniel Jones. And because, you know, some of you are like, well, why didn't they move on from him? Or why didn't they let him test the market? Because Jones and the Giants in 2022, they had a better year than I think they were anticipating. I don't think Shane and Dable realistically thought the team would do as well as they did given that, you know, it was a new system, new coaches, new everything. So lo and behold, Daniel Jones, you know, has a good year. 
The Giants end up with a 9-7-1 and one record, get to the playoffs, win a playoff game. They drop in their draft status from, you know, they were expected to be maybe a top 10. Now they're drafting at, what, 25? And now they can't get a franchise quarterback. So they really didn't have a choice but to sign Daniel Jones and run it back, which is why they probably went with the structure of the contract that they did. So that being said, that being said, folks, you know, why didn't they let Daniel Jones test the market? Because they figured, okay, look, we had success with him the first year, you know, in this system. Let's run it back and see what we got. So that's how that kind of, you know, played out. If you look at, you know, go back and you look at the history and everything happened, you know, everything that happened. And, and quite honestly, you know, I know people will say, well, there's always a way to find more money if you want to. Yeah, but that's going to put you in cap hell. So you want to be careful about restructuring deals and shoving money down the line because that will put you in cap hell. That's what Gettleman did. And that's why when Shane came in in his first year, the Giants had a salary cap situation that was a total mess. One that, you know, is still being cleaned up, I might add. So one last point I'll make on this. Um, if the Giants had potentially, you know, broken the bank for Saquon, not only do I think they wouldn't have been able to extend Andrew Thomas and Dexter Lawrence, I question if they would have been able to get a Sean Robinson and Bobby O'Karake, two players this past year who really, you know, pulled their weight. So as for next year, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but, um, you know, that's a little background as to maybe what the Giants were thinking in this whole handling. So coming up, I'm going to talk about, you know, again, this, this whole idea about, you know, what's going on moving forward, what the Giants should do or what I think they will do. And um, we'll talk about that right after this. Hey, Giant fans, you can still enjoy the fun of playing daily fantasy sports with prize picks because right now with basketball season underway, prize picks gives you the chance to pick up combo projections across football and basketball from this specials league that was created specifically for combo projections featuring two or more players from different sports or leagues. Prize picks is so easy to play. Just pick two or more players, predict their stats, and sit back and see how they perform. It takes less than 60 seconds to make an entry, and when you play with Price Picks, you'll enjoy quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and a wide selection of player and stat types. So what are you waiting for? Go to pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL and use the promo code LockedOnNFL, written in all lowercase letters, to get a first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash LockedOnNFL, and that promo code is LockedOnNFL for your first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trana, and we're talking about the Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley contract sequence. Yeah, we're revisiting it because, look, Kayvon Thibodeau had something to say about it. It made news, it made headlines. And, you know, look, I just felt it was time to, to address it, even though I'm getting in a little late on the action here. But hopefully, you know, what I have to say is still worth, you know, listening to. But anyway, um, in this segment, I want to talk about the future, because here we are again. Saquon Barkley is going to be a free agent. Um, the Giants do have the, um, the franchise tag at their disposal if they want to use it on him a second time. And I do believe they will do that. Now, a lot of you, you know, when I say that, a lot of you are like, ah, oh, I'd rather have the 12 million, you know, that it's going to cost to franchise tag him. I'd rather have that in the salary cap. Let me make this point for you guys. For those of you who are worried that the Giants are going to miss out on some great free agent um, if they don't have that 12 million uh, available to them. If the Giants can get a deal done with Saquon, which is preferred, I think, by both sides. I think both sides would like to get a deal done. If they can get it done at a reasonable amount and get it done before the start of free agency, then this whole topic about having enough money becomes a moot point. If they cannot get it done and Saquon, you know, digs in and says, you know, I'm, I'm not 
sign in for less than the equivalent of the 2023 and 2024, I'm sorry, the 2024 and 2025 franchise tag amount for guaranteed money, uh, then we're heading into a stalemate here. So now what I think happens is that, you know, the Giants apply the franchise tag. They try to get something done. If they cannot, then I think it would behoove them in, to act in good faith and say to Saquon, okay, you know what? We're not getting anywhere. You value yourself a lot more than we value you as far as the money goes. We are going to give your agent permission to seek a trade with another team. And if we like the terms, you know, the the compensation, the, the trade destination and all that stuff, we will do a tag and trade with you. Now, some of you are like, well, who's going to trade for Saquon or what could they possibly get? Look, they got for Leonard Williams. What did they get? They got a third round pick, an extra, uh, I'm sorry, an extra second round pick. So Leonard Williams was, was beat up and he had a lot more tread on his tires. Saquon, yes, he's had an injury history, but he's still a very, very good running back and he can still be an asset to some teams offense. So don't discount the fact that, you know, oh, they're not going to get much for Saquon. Any draft pick is, is worthwhile. And if they can get, you know, a second or a third and then a conditional pick, why wouldn't you do that if you're the Giants? All right. Now, here's the other thing. If you remove the tag from him, you do the sign and tag. I'm sorry. If you do the sign and trade, all right, what happens is, is that Barkley will sign the tag. It'll get traded to the new team. The Giants then get a cap credit back on the tag amount, which, as you know, once they apply that tag, regardless if it's signed, that money comes out of the pot. So now you take that $12 million or whatever it is. I think it's twelve point five. I think. Now you have money to sign your draft class. All right? So you can still do things in free agency, and then you use the money that you would get back from a tag and trade to sign your draft class. And here's the other thing, folks. For those of you who are saying, oh, my God, they won't be able to afford an edge rusher. They won't be able to afford, you know, offensive line help if they tie up, you know, that kind of money in Saquon Barkley and the franchise tag. Well, maybe they go and they use some of these draft picks that they have on a guy that, you know, has a higher ceiling and comes at a lower cost because he's on a rookie deal. So it's a matter of cap gymnastics. It's also a matter of, you know, who has the higher ceiling who's going to be part of your team for the long term beyond maybe two years. Because at this point, look, Saquon Barkley, if I had to take a guess, maybe he gets a three-year deal with an out after two years. That's not really long-term if you think about it. But if you can get a rookie offensive lineman, for example, on a four-year deal that has a high ceiling, you tell me which is preferred. I think it's pretty obvious. Wouldn't you agree? So. You know, they have that, um, you know, that option available. That is what I think they will do. Again, I do think that ideally they would like to have Barkley back. You know, I know he is well liked by the organization. I know, you know, he has been the face of the franchise. He has been a solid player for them. He has been a good locker room citizen for them. I mean, he's everything you could want. But to overspend on him. I just don't see the Giants doing that. I really don't. And, you know, some of you may disagree and say they absolutely have to have him because he is part of the offense. He is he is the offense, you know, which is one of the opinions that, that Kayvon Thibodeau expressed. Get some other playmakers in here because, you know, when you just have one guy who is your offense and becomes it, it becomes that much easy, easier for other teams to defend you. So it would behoove you, I think to get other guys in there to help with the offense, to help make the offense more explosive, you know, get a number one receiver, get another tight end who, you know, can replace Waller, who is, you know, his ceiling. You wonder how much higher he can go. There are other options to go. It's not the be all end all. So that's kind of how I see that playing out. Now, this whole game with Saquon Barkley does come with a risk. And I'm going to tell you what that risk is right after this. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chests. 
big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased about your life. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn for 10% off your first month. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Train on P-Train, and Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you all day, every day, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And speaking of subscribing, those of you who are watching this podcast on YouTube, it would be greatly appreciated if you would like, subscribe to this channel, uh, hit, you know, like this video, and of course, um, ring that little bell. So this way, every time I post something new, you will be notified of it. So uh you know, that would be appreciated. So let's get back to the topic at hand. And in this segment, what is the big risk that the Giants are potentially going to be playing if this Saquon Barkley negotiation turns out the way I think it's going to be, which is basically a tag and trade if no deal is done? Well, here's the thing. Saquon Barkley is liked in the locker room by his teammates. He is respected. He was voted one of the offensive captains, all right? He is just, like I said, there, there's no reason not to like this guy. It's not like, you know, he's obnoxious or loud or lazy or any of that stuff. There is absolutely no reason not to like him. His teammates appreciate him. You know, I mean, last year, if you need any proof that Saquon is a team first guy, go back to last year, how he could have held out of training camp when his contract dispute was just not going anywhere, he could have held out and made a point. He could have held out of the first couple of games to make a point, And he didn't. He said, okay, you know what? I'm going to be mature about this. I'm going to come in. I'm going to work my tail off and I'm going to prove that yes, a running back is a valuable asset to have on a football team. That got a lot of respect, folks. A lot of people saw that and said, man, if that were me, I wouldn't have done that. That just goes to show you the character of Saquon Barkley and how his teammates feel about him. So here's the danger the Giants are potentially playing with if Saquon Barkley is jerked around in their perception um, or is traded. You remove that guy and you're going to have a bunch of uh, teammates who are going to look at the Giants and say, Guys, what are we doing here? You want to win or you want to, you know, play hardball? Now, again, folks, there's always a business aspect of it. And I think a lot of people, you know, sometimes they they react on emotion because nobody wants to see Saquon Barkley in another uniform. Certainly nobody in that locker room that I know of at any rate. But there's always the business side. So I think the potential danger here is if the Giants, you know, and Bar and Barkley don't get a deal done and the Giants end up trading him, that could be perceived the wrong way in the locker room. So I'm not sure how Joe Shane, you know, necessarily handles these business decisions. If he goes down to the, to the guys, you know, while they're working out and says, Hey, you know, by the way, the reason why I did, you know, this, this, and this is because I don't know that he does that, but you would hope that the culture in the locker room that Shane and particularly head coach Brian Dable have tried to build would be able to sustain such a, a uh, transaction. Now, again, you don't want to take, you don't want to lose a popular player, you know, and, and also I'll, I'll throw this out here out at you for what it's worth. Sterling Shepard was a very popular player in that locker room. His circumstances, obviously different. 
he's moving on, if not retiring. I don't know if he's retiring, but he's not going to be back. So you lose two potentially popular players in both Barkley and Shepard. That can maybe take a little air out of the tires of that locker room. So now it becomes up to the leaders. It becomes up to the coach, Brian Dable, to make sure that guys don't walk around with their heads down. You know, that they that guys come in, you know, when, when the offseason program starts, they come in ready to work. And that there is no divisiveness where they say, oh, Daniel Jones, you cost the Saquon Barkley. I don't think that will happen. But these are all some of the dangers you have to look out for. And I do think, you know, Dable will be on top of that, make sure that that doesn't happen, that there's no, you know, splintering of the locker room over that. Because look, at the end of the day, business is business. And, you know, there are mixed feelings about whether a teammate should comment on, on another guy's contract and whatnot. And you see it all the time. You see guys, you know, like when Andrew Thomas got paid and Dexter Lawrence got paid, you saw their teammates, you know, say, yeah, way to go. Those guys deserve to be paid. And that's, you know, that's part of the course. But when guys don't get paid and you have guys saying, well, he should get paid. That's a little stickier. Whether he's right or wrong, that's a stickier situation. So I'm going to be curious to see how the Giants handle that if it comes down to that. But again, I want to stress the preference, as I understand it, is that the Giants want to get Saquon a deal that works for both sides so that he can be a giant for life, which is what Saquon wants and is what the team wants for that matter. So that is the rundown. That'll do it for today's show. As always, I appreciate you tuning in, making us your first listen of the day, or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day. Coming up this week, we're going to do a keep them, dump them show. We're going to have Solomon Wilcox on. He's going to talk draft, Giants, you know, some of these decisions uh, that are facing the Giants. We've got programs for you all week long, Monday through Friday. We continue to go all week long here on the Locked on Giants podcast. And I hope you will tune in to check out the content that we have planned for you. All right, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in and I will see you tomorrow.